What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to become the Wolverine. I hear you're quite an animal. Look who's talking. Now I know this has probably been done like a hundred million times but I saw a lot of them, you know, were using those beast incantations and let's be honest, Wolverine would not throw rocks at his enemies in any multiverse you can think of. That's just not a thing. So we're taking a more literal approach to the character with this build. And as you can see, um, I didn't recreate huge Jackman and I didn't uh, try to recreate the comic accurate Wolverine either because let's be honest, I know my audience very well. So as I mentioned, this build is pretty straightforward. It's a up close hack and slash. So that's the biggest drawback. You constantly have to be in the enemy's faces. Always have to be on them, which means you may take more damage. But as you'll see from this footage, I'm finding a Godskin Apostle boss in Kaled on New Game Plus, and I'm doing a massive, massive amount of damage. So I don't think you'll struggle by any means with this build, unless you're fighting like golems or other enemies that are resistant to bleed, then it might get a little more difficult. But I still think our physical damage is going to be pretty high because of some of the talismans we'll be using to combat that drawback. Now, obviously it's not perfect, you know, some bosses might be harder with this build, but I think overall, super solid build, extremely fun, and it really does make you feel like you're actually playing a Wolverine game and not Elden Ring. <laughs> the basic strategy for this build is to use the buff uh, on your character, and then you just want to go in. That's it, you want to go in. But as you'll see, I do a lot of jump attacks because uh, the jump attacks with these fist weapons are super good and it can cause bleed and again because we're using bleed uh, which is at 110 on my weapons as of right now like one or two hits and the boss will bleed as you see it's a pretty ridiculous the charge r twos on bosses the jump attacks um the roll and punish with r1 attacks you can try to guard counter, but I don't think that's really useful against bosses, especially this one because he hits pretty freaking hard. But against regular enemies, you just want to go in and mash R1 to your heart's content. You will destroy everyone in like 0.25 seconds. Now the Ash of War we'll be using is a Lifesteal Fist. It's not amazing, like there's not a lot of good fist weapon Ashes of War in this game, unfortunately. And that's the only bleed one we can use on these claws. Now the range is bad, the startup animation is so bad, and it only works on humanoid creatures. So it doesn't work on animals, it doesn't work on the clean rot knights, for example. However, you will still be able to do damage to those enemies, you just won't be able to get the 30% health back from that Ash of War. So that's how this build works in a nutshell. So I think I'll do the stats first, actually. Um, so basically, my character here is at level 152, and I'm on New Game Plus. And my attribute points are distributed this way. 40 Vigor, 15 Mind, 30 Endurance, 65 Dexterity, 15 Faith, and 50 Arcane. Now let me explain my reasoning for all of this. Uh, so this character started out as a Samurai class, and the reason that I put points into mind and faith is because we'll be using the flame grant me strength buff. And the only reason I added this to this build is not because this build actually needs more damage, it's just because it gives you something else to do than just slashing and slashing and slashing your enemies to pieces. So it makes it a bit more interesting. You can totally uh, skip this step, but it's really up to you. And if you do, then I would suggest to put these points in both Vigor and Endurance. Now the Dexterity is 65 for very obvious reason. I don't think this needs an explanation. Um, but the Arcane is because I love me some bleed builds and let's be honest, Wolverine's Adamantium Claws are especially good at making people bleed. So that's why I thought it fit really well with the character. So that's what the Arcane is for. Uh, it's for the bleed status and the fact that we're using a Blood Ash of War. So that is what your stats would look like. As far as the weapon goes, obviously, we'll be using the whole clause. Uh, minor plus 25. Again, the affinity is blood because the Ash of War I'm using is an arcane Ash of War. And it is Life Steel Fist. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, we can't put Blood Blade on these babies because man, that would have been freaking amazing. <laughs> so we have to work with the only fist 
weapon Ash of War that isn't complete crap. And because I explained how we'll be using a buff incantation, Flame Grant Me Strength, we'll be using the Finger Seal. Again, that is leveled up to plus 25. So the Finger Seal, pretty easy, you can buy it right at the start. When you get to Round Table Hold, you can go see the Twin Maiden Husks and you can buy it from them. Now the Hook Claws, super easy again, you can find them in Stormvale Castle. So after you defeat Godric, you take the Stormvale Cliffside and once you get into that room, it's literally right underneath the stairs where there's a, a big enemy with a two-handed axe and the claws will be on a body in the left corner under these stairs. So it's really easy to find. Now, as I mentioned in my top video, if you've watched that, you don't need two hook claws to have one on each hand. Um, basically, when you're one-handing it, it looks like this. When you're two-handing it, you have it on both hands. So that's specifically a thing that applies to all fist weapons. So the moveset here is freaking awesome because it is very, very Wolverine-like. You know, it's good old slashes. Even the sound, like, it's so good, dude. And basically you want to use, again, R1 for this. Now there isn't power stancing with fist weapons, but you can guard counter. So you hold L1 and then you click on R2 and that's what it does. Now to get the Lifesteal Fist Ash of War, you need to go to Kaled. Uh, it's really close to one of the Sites of Grace. So take the Astray from Kaled, Highway North, Site of Grace, or make your way there. And the Ash of War will be right here. So it's a, a Scarab, again, that you need to kill. So once you spawn, go directly north up there. And it should be right in this area here. Actually, I think it might be on top of this rock. But yeah, really easy to find. But it works really well against humanoid creatures. And it's really satisfying to hit. <laughs> Just wish the range was a bit better because it's a bit insane how close you have to be <laughs> and how long the animation is, like the startup animation. So to get a flame at grant me strength, which raises your physical attack power. Basically, it's a buff, and as I mentioned earlier, you need a finger seal to cast it. So to get to this, it's pretty straightforward. You need to go to Fort Gale. So that's the side of grace that you want to take. I have shown this in a video before, but uh, it's pretty hard to show on the map directly where it is, so I'll just show you the route again. It's not super far anyways, so might as well. Make your way up here. If you don't want this uh, annoying knight up here, but you can kill him right here. And uh, the item will be on this body right here. So uh, obviously you want to get out of there so you don't die like this. <laughs> you just want to quickly pick it up and go. So that's all you need a uh, weapon and buff wise. Now let's move on to the talismans. For this build, I really wanted to focus on attack power and the blood loss, of course, because this is a bleed build. So you'll need the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. So when you proc blood on an enemy, this will actually automatically increase your attack power. So to get this, you need to kill Mog. Now, it's not the real Mog, which is in the Mahogany Palace. It's the fake, quote-unquote, fake Mog underneath the Lindel capital. You'll need to get to the subterranean shining grounds, I think it's called. And there's plenty of guides on YouTube that I saw that shows you exactly where to go because it's a pretty long trek to get down there. For the next talisman, we have the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. Now, there is another version of this that you can get earlier called the Winged Sword Insignia. Uh, the Rotten version you can get after completing Millicent's quest line. Uh, once you get to the Halleck Tree area and you talk to her in the prayer room, then you'll find her and near the Melania boss fight and you'll be able to summon her to either help her defeat her sisters or help her sisters defeat her. Now, you specifically need to help her kill her sisters to get this specific talisman. To get the regular winged talisman, you need to make your way to Lyernia of the Lakes. I usually take the uh, Lakeshore side of Grace. And then you're gonna make your way through the water here and you'll see all these jellyfishes and there's a cave here. It's called the Stillwater Cave and you need to defeat the boss that's in here to get a talisman. I'll show you how to get through here. Um, it's also pretty annoying <laughs> the first time you come here. It's just a lot of poison.
And here's a boss fight. Again, standing in poison, because why not? So we're gonna wait until they're here. Oh, that doesn't work. That's interesting. Not a very hard boss by any means, just a very annoying poison area if you're low level. <laughs> so the blue dancer charm is interesting, it raises your attack power the lower your equipment load is and because we're using, you know, a wolverine build and you probably won't be using a lot of armor, then I definitely suggest this because you'll be doing like way more damage just because as you see our equip load is at 14 right now. So the way it works is it affects physical damage only. So basically the damage bonus, it's not really a percentage, uh, it's based on your exact equip load. So it's kind of like uh, your stats, you know how your stats work. So you want to have between either 8 or 16 equip load for uh, this to actually make a difference. It's the boss in the high water cave in Limgrave. It's located in the high road cave, you have to defeat the boss, it's a golem. Pretty freaking easy. Uh, basically you want to take the saints bridge and there will be a torrent that can get you down in the water and all you need to do is just follow this path go up and you will find the cave easily now for our last one millicent's prosthesis now this is a bit harder in the sense that you need to be you know either new game plus or someone needs to drop this for you but the reason i'm using this on this build specifically because you know we're really trying to increase our damage because of the limitations of the ash of war we're using and the fact that fist weapons, you know, don't have a lot of range. So basically, this boosts your dexterity and raises your attack power with successive attacks, just like the uh, winged sword insignia does. And it actually does stack with the rotten winged sword insignia, so that's awesome for us. So basically, what you need to do uh, in this case, kind of like the rotten winged insignia, you need to follow through Millicent's quest line to the very end of it, and you need to choose to help her sisters kill Millicent. Or the quickest way you can get this, once you continue Millicent's quest line and you meet her in Windmill Heights, after you give her the Valkyrie Prosthesis arm, and that's when you can kill her and she will drop that talisman for you. So that's the build everyone. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but it's actually fun and actually makes you feel like you're really playing Wolverine, which is really awesome. I really really hope this guide was helpful to you. If you want more Elden Ring videos, there is plenty more on my channel. So have yourself a wonderful day everyone, and I'll see you all very soon.